1.2 talks about functions and function notation. Now a function works very much like a juicer. You're inputting something like a carrot into your function like a juicer and that's going to output something like some juice. The way that you've seen it before in terms of numbers is a little bit more general. You've seen something like this before simple linear equation. Your function is your equation itself and I'm going to input something into it. I'm going to tell you, well, why don't we make x equal to 3? So your input goes into your function and you're now going to solve for your output. So once I input 3 into my x, my y value became 8, which is my output. In terms of functions, the only thing that really changes is this y value then is written like this. Okay? And that's pronounced f at x. Now, since we said x was equal to 3, in this step, we know that x was 3. So you've input x as 3 into the equation, and anywhere in the equation that you see an x, you're going to put 3 instead, and that's going to give you an output. Okay, so that's the proper function notation. Now we have several functions here, and uh, we're just going to discover what is f at negative 1 and what is f at x plus 1. Okay, so here's your function right here, and we're now going to input negative 1 everywhere we see an x. Okay, so f at negative 1 equals to 2 and there's an x, so we're subbing it in in brackets, plus 7. And we're going to discover what the output is, the answer. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 7 equals to 5. Okay, so when we input negative 1 into this function, we got an output of 5. Let's do the next one. F at x plus 1. That means that everywhere you see an x in the equation, you're going to put x plus 1 instead. So 2x, and remember, instead of x, I'm now going to put x plus 1, plus 7. And then you're just going to simplify. 2x plus 2 plus 7 equals 2x plus 9. Okay, so when you input x plus 1 into your function, you have an output of 2x plus 9. And let's do the second one. f at negative 1, and again, everywhere we see x's, we're going to put a negative 1 in brackets. And then we're going to simplify. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. Positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And then minus 5, which is negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And then the second one, f at x plus 1. And then wherever we see an x, we're going to put x plus 1 in brackets squared. 4x plus 1 minus 5. And then we're going to expand and simplify. So doing FOIL, and then distributive law, and then we had that 5. So that's x squared. 6 x's and no constants. So the 1, the 4, and the negative 5 cancelled out. Those are pretty straightforward. Now the last one is a, one that's a little bit trickier. If I wanted f to the negative 1, or f at negative 1, there is nowhere in the function itself where there's an x. So I can't sub negative 1 into anything, therefore my answer is 10. The same goes for if I have f at x plus 1, well again, there's nowhere I can sub in the x plus 1 because there's no x in the function itself. So again, my answer is 10. Now in the previous video, we talked about mapping um, diagrams, and again, your domain is your first oval, and then your second oval is your range, your x and your y values. So if we have a question like this, oh, there we go. Use a mapping diagram 
to first of all write the set of ordered pairs and then second of all state if the relation is a function. So let's just talk about it a little bit. Let's write out all of the different coordinates. Okay, so first one. Starting here, going there, first coordinate is 2 and negative 2. Then we're going to go here to here. That's 2 and positive 3. Starting at 5 and going there, 5 and negative 1. And then 11 goes to 0 and it goes to 4. Okay, so those are all my coordinates. And let's do the same for the other one. 5, negative 9, negative 1 and 1. 0 goes to 2. And then 1 goes to 7, but then 3 also goes to 7. All right. Now recall that it can only be a function if you have one x value um, with one y value. So if you ever have one x value with two different y values, it is not a function. Okay, so with the value of x, it has one y value. Okay, but it looks like with the same x value, you have another different y value. In this case, this is where it fails. Your vertical line is going to touch these two points at the same time. So in this case, no, it's not a function because it fails when x equals to 2. It looks like it also fails when you have these 11s, so two different y values for the same x value. So that's where it also fails. Now in the second one, it looks like exactly the same thing. We have two x values with different y values. Okay, Sorry, one x value for two different y values. So at x equals to 0, it also fails. This is not a function. Okay, so that was just a little bit of a function review. Now, something that a lot of people make mistakes with is the very last one. Having two of the same y value, but different x values. That's okay. That's not a big deal. It's just when you have the same x value and two different y values. Okay, so again, this one is not a function because of the blue part, not because of the green part.